Okay, so this is how I do my corners. This is light gauge, 25 gauge light gauge uh, framing, but this is how we do our corners. And there's really only one way to do them. What we always do is overlap them. Okay, so I'm going to, what I mean by overlapping them is when I'm taking, when I have a corner, here, here's my corner for say, okay? And we have 10 foot lengths of track. When I'm laying in a, in a piece this way, when I, uh, what I need to do is measure back and cut a little tab out so I can fold this track underneath the, of the other one. Okay, one, two. I want them to fold over, which you'll see. So that's what we're doing here. I'm always going to uh, cut this full track back. And then say if I have cuts, I'm going to measure from the, the cut to the outside of the other track. And then I'm going to cut it back the distance. In this video, in this case, this is three and five eighths track. And we're five eighths drywall. Okay, so we have three and five eighths steel and five eighths dr uh, drywall. So uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go four and a quarter inches back to make our cut, but only add the three and five eighths though to your, um, uh, to your overall cuts, to your cuts, okay? Because what we're doing is we're, we're leaving three quarters of an inch up to three quarters of an inch up to three quarters of an inch for drywall to pass in to the steel, which you'll see as well here in a moment. I know a lot to take in already, but watch what we're doing here. So yeah, pay attention to how I'm cutting the steel. I, I have been doing this so long, my, my hands are leather, but I do recommend gloves. All right, so just like that, we're overlapping the tracks. Same thing, okay? This is a different corner. There's inside corners, outside corners, there, and then there are door corners. We're going to go over all of them in this video. So pay attention, watch to the end, because you're, you're going to know everything about corners in this video. I'm even going to show you how to drywall them. Yeah, see how we're cutting that? See how I'm cutting that? So the idea here is this. There's, we cut the tab back here. And that is so we, we then leave a floater stud here. And then we screw in our end stud or our corner stud here. How, how we screw it in, our, our corner stud is we put a wafer in this side and we put a wafer on this track so that both tracks are screwed into this stud. When we shoot it down, we're also going to put shots in here. So when it's shot down, it'll also be shot through both layers of steel. So in that way, all of this system is tied in together. We're also going to have a piece of drywall that is going to come across here. And we're going to screw it in this way, okay, this way. To tie this whole corner in. So this little piece here, this is the drywall. This is the floater. And this is the corner stud. You get it? So we're going to go over the, this system in different ways in this video. So pay attention. If you have any questions, leave them down below in the comments, guys. I'll definitely get back to you all. This is an inside corner. The inside corner is different from the outside corner because we'll be drywalling the inside of it first. All right. So this is the inside corner. The last one there was the outside corner. I call this the inside corner because I always do the inside of the rooms first. So we'll be drywalling the inside here first. 
which means this floater stud will be loose, will be loose, so that when we come and drywall the outside, okay, we then end up fastening into the corners here on angles, okay, through the steel instead of the other way. And that, and that is perfectly fine in a corner like this. It's all tied in still. The best way, of course, is screwing them in like the on the inside, on the outside corners. But it doesn't matter. This is how the inside corner works. This is the door corner. Now, what I'm doing in the door corner is it's always the same size, guys. All right, it's very simple. We're doing the same thing. We're gonna overlap the steel. I'm gonna uh, make a lip in the steel to, so the drywall will slip in. And it's gonna be the same thing. I'll uh, pause it here in a moment. When we get it laid in, I'll pause it and I'll go over everything with you guys. But yeah, this is the, now the door corner. So we have the outside corner, the inside corner, and the door corner, okay? Watch this, okay. So here's the door. In this situation, we're going to have this piece of steel is little. And we always do it this way, okay? This long, the long side always goes into the small side by the door because the door is going to swing into this wall, okay? This door swing is in. So that means this is the hinge side of the door, okay? And the swing is in. Now, this is four and a quarter inches to the inside of the track, plus whatever size of track you're using, whether it be six inch, right here is three and five eighths, but substitute this number for X, okay? It could be six inch, eight inch, inch and five eighths, two and a half, you know what I mean? Could be anything. We're gonna have the same deal. The reason why is we're gonna have one door stud and one floater stud, and, and there's a space in between here, okay? I leave a space in there of five eighths, the size of the drywall, the size of the drywall. We're gonna have our corner stud here. This is our door stud. Here's our floater. The drywall will first come in here. The first piece will come in this corner here. And this floater will lock, will lock in through this way. Okay, that's how that floater will get locked in. The reason why this is four and a quarter is the studs are an inch and a half thick, an inch and a half times two for two studs, and then the five eighths drywall plus the five eighths space, okay, for the space of the drywall is an inch and a quarter, okay? Obviously. So three inches plus an inch and a quarter is four and a quarter. That's why this little piece is four and a quarter plus your wall width, plus, plus X. That's why that is like that. You understand? The, the way this goes is this is the first piece. Then the second piece goes is this little, will be this door leg, right? This little door side. And then you're going to then you're going to do this side, the flat side, 3, and then you're going to do this side, 4, with drywall. That's how that works. You always screw in the flat side of this stud, the flat side first, so that it's straight because as long as your walls are leveled and lasered in, that corner is going to be beautiful every time. All right, guys, just watch what I'm doing here. If you have any questions, leave them down below in the comments for sure.
Bula. Yeah, there we go. Those are the pins that we're using. The black concrete pins are a little bit longer than the steel pins. And the green shots, the green tabs for concrete. You guys might have ram sets. You guys might have other guns. But yeah, these are for the 351. But uh, don't forget to cock all your bottom track. I, uh, I cock everything, guys. Make sure all your stuff is cocked. But you can see there at the bottom how big this piece of track is. Okay, you can see it right uh, while well, it's flipped upside down here. How long it is. Here's our little space. That's our slip for the drywall. Okay, that's 5 eighths to 3 quarter. Right? And this is our 4 and a quarter. And then this is 4 and a quarter here. And then the distance from he from here to here is X. It's it is X is this width. This could be a different size wall even. This could be three and five eighths going into six inch. Okay, that's why I call it X. There's a beautiful corner. That is a door corner. That is a door corner. As long as you guys understand that it's because we have to tie everything in. It makes it very, it makes it very strong when all these systems are overlapping and tied in together. And yeah, one shot in, in each side to get it straight. And on this full piece here, I'm going to put one in this side and put it down on the other side. It's all it's important to know guys. It's important to to think about this. I'm just going to tell you one quick thing here while we're on the door stud. You do not put a full piece this this way and then and and then overlap it this way. If you know what I mean. Okay? If you switch it around, you don't ever do it like this, okay? Where the drywall goes in this way. It it you always do it the other way. It's stronger this way. It's stronger this way for the door, for the door's sake. Top track. The same thing, guys. I you lay out all your bottom track, and then you cut your cut your top track from end from the wall or whatever to the outside of the track that you need, so that you can overlap your top track as well. And you're going to be cutting your lip for drywall as you did on the bottom, so drywall does not catch the top track when it's going in. Same thing you do, you copy it on the top. You copy the top, right? Get all your track ready before you stand up anything. I'm going four and a quarter everywhere, guys. That's what I'm doing here. I'm going four and a quarter everywhere. And yeah, man, just check out how I'm cutting it. Just pay attention to how I'm cutting it by hand. I, I just cut a little tab, I flip it up. If you cut it from the top like this, just go on a little angle to the outside, to the right. Okay, just cut it on an angle to, and then out to the right. If you're cutting it on the top, you, you do the same thing. You just kind of want to go in towards the right and then out by the left sort of, and, and the tab will pull, peel up. This is the inside corner. This is the same thing. I'm doing the same thing on the top track as I did on the bottom. There you go. That's how I mean cutting out words like that when you're when we have it flipped up the other way. I kind of so inside corners, I I cut like that on outside corners, I cut the other way. Always get your sheet stood up, right? Get your sheet stood up. That's what I mean by screwing in through the drywall. Then then it's simple. Like I was showing you before, the drywall. So this piece goes on first. Because the floater stud is here. So the floater stud gets pushed up and screwed in from the back side of the board through. Okay? And then you put this piece on. You could put the other piece on if you want first. It doesn't really matter either way. Um, but try to get a full sheet in there somewhere. But it might be two cuts on this. In this wall, I believe it was two cuts. 
But you got to get your floaters tied in first. That's the biggest thing. Get your floaters tied in. Just like that. Yeah, it looks like two cuts. I could have put the, it could have been a 4080 even off that wall. I could have put on first. And then boom, drywall the inside. This is the inside corner now, right? See the outside corner, how we got the actual floater tied in? We're coming on to the inside corner now. I just, I have a little piece there. That's a full sheet. You can see the little, little spacer on the ground because I'm always coming a half inch up. For all of my drywall, I'm coming a half inch up. I always keep little pieces of half inch wood in my tool bags, actually. And then I'm not even cutting this sheet. I'm just overlapping it. I'm just overlapping it. The only thing I'm not doing is screwing in the, the corner stud. Okay, I'm not screwing in the corner stud on this one because I'm waiting. See, there's the floater. I'm leaving it. Two, I'm not screwing any, putting any screws in the floater, and I'm not screwing this stud in along here either. I'm waiting. I'm waiting till I get the flat side of the stud screwed in first, because it this drywall will be tied in, and that makes that perfectly straight. Boom. If now I don't have to put a square or a level on it. You understand what I'm saying? So once I screw in this stud up this way. Then I'll come to this side and, and, uh, and screw it in. Secondly. And then I'll back cut this sheet. I'll back cut it after and snap it off. It's, it's that easy, right? And that's the inside corner. There's no floaters. When I get to the other side of the wall, I'll show you how we've tied that floater in. There's a different way we tie it in. That's all. Yeah, there's tons of drywall tricks, guys. Always screw in the track, four screws in the bottom, four screws in the top, always in the same spots every time. I'm going like eight to 10 inches there in the, in the corners and then on the ends and in the bevels, I mark my every two feet while I'm, uh, while I'm, uh, tacking them in. And then I go back and I screw them all off every one foot in the bevel. Now that's a piece worker's way of doing it. Every one foot. And you mark every two feet as you're going so that they're, my screws are in the same spot every sheet every time. You know that? They don't change. And then, yeah, that's just back cutting. I'm back cutting everything. And when I back cut, I'm, I'm cutting the other sheet off in an angle because you know we always want to leave a quarter inch. We don't want tight corners or perfect corners. We always leave a quarter inch uh, behind on either side for the corner bead. Rasping. I'm always rasping my corners, and when I rasp, I turn it also into a, in a, on an angle. So I'm I'm rasping into the corner, so the taper can have put the corner bead on nice and easy. And there we go. There's the outside corner. So now this floater hasn't been screwed in yet, which is great. And I'm going to once the drywall goes in, we're just going to screw it in off an angle. But you can see in there, there, this end here. All right, you can see here, this corner here, I did first. This is now the outside of the first outside corner. The floater piece, which is on the other side of this wall, was first. Then the, this piece was second. This piece will be third because it's, it's the piece on the flat side of the stud, okay? And then this piece going on this way is going to be number four because that we're screwing into the flange, the, so, the small side, which is now straight because we have the flat side screwed in, right? That's how we finish that corner. And then this is the inside corner, the second corner. We screw in, and we're screwing in every two feet, but we're screwing in on the ends on an angle, okay? On, these, on the ends here, and like I said, every two feet or more, well, you'll know like if you have to do more. But you put them on an angle. You angle your screws there, and that's how you tie in that stud, that, that, that corner. So it's simple, right? We put on the flat side first. It was kind of backwards. If you remember inside here, we put this piece on first, and then the corner on the other side second. And then now on the outside, this is the third piece and then the piece that goes across here will be the fourth piece to go on that's the order and it's always the same it never changes guys this is the order all the time always do the insides of your rooms and then the outsides you could have come around and finished it on the outside tied it in i guess but as a piece worker this is how you do it 
This is how you do it as a piece worker. And there you go. There's your last piece in. Your fourth and final piece is in. Everything's tied in. That corner's tight, right? You'll, be, you'll see how that all ties in together now. And there you go. There's the out, outside corner, inside corner, complete. Inside corner, outside corner, complete. And if you have any more questions on those, let me know. Okay, I'm going to show you guys some more stuff here. Don't go anywhere yet. we got more stuff coming, but there you go. Keep, keep your distance from the ends. Make a nice corner. I always, put, I always start in the middle of the wall if I can, right? I always start here in the middle of the wall. If I can, a, a level, right? Level this sheet, right? Laser this first sheet. And then I'll, then this number is going to always be consistent, right? 16 inches or whatever less. Uh, and then I put that piece in, doesn't really matter. But in this corner, it's the same thing. We're just going to go over it again. The first piece to go in is the floater, is to tie in the floater. Yeah, that's why you don't, you know, you don't screw in your floaters uh, because you're, yeah, they're supposed to be floating. That's piece workers and uh, get kind of mad with you when you f screw those in. Some jobs, they, they tell you to because they fall out. They, want, they don't want them to fall out on people. But there you go. The floater studs tied in. I screwed it in from the other side every two feet, right down to the bottom, the very bottom. And then I put the wafer in. Do you understand that? I screw it in and I wafer it. This is important as well. Guys, uh, if you haven't noticed, along this way, I also wafer it at the bottom there on both sides. Okay, it's screwed in all the way up every two feet. And the top and bottom are screwed in. And these corner studs here, I always put a screw in the, ed the edge on the flat side here. And then you'll see another uh, a screw on the other side going into the edge of the stud. That makes it all tied in again, because then I have a screw in each track for this, this stud here. It makes it very strong. You got to make sure everything's tied in together. That's the important thing, is tying it all in and making it as strong as possible. And that corner stud is never screwed in. The, 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 I only ever screw that in after the front is done, after the front of it is done. The flat side is boarded, and then you screw it in from the other side. But yeah, see how strong that is? It's very, very, very strong. Here's the door, the door corner now. Okay, I got the floater in. It's tied in. I also screwed it in. It is also screwed in. That, that's important, okay? And then you can see a screw. I put a screw in here and a screw in there. And I do the same for the top and bottom tracks, okay? I don't put two screws here. I put them all, I put them in the other way. This makes this door very strong, okay? The hinge side of the door very strong. Screw it in from the back side of the drywall going, you know, going in from the, from the back side. Just like that. If you guys want to know how to drywall these doors, I'll link a video here that'll tell you all about it. And that's just how you do it. Just screw it in that way. I'm just showing you how we screw it in from the back side of the drywall to make, to locks it all in. It's beautiful. Now look how strong that, that hinge side, hinge side of that door is going to be. Okay. It's amazing. And that's complete guys. That door, that corner is complete. Just know the order. Okay. Just know the order. We're, we're putting the inside here first. This is the first piece. Um, the second piece of the corner, well, the second piece will be this, this butt, like the, the buck up top here. Okay. will kind of be the second piece. And then the leg, this is the leg, right? We have a buck piece up there and then we have the leg for this corner. Though, right. So first piece is this piece to tie in the floater. And then we put the buck in above the door and then the leg goes in. All right. And then on the outside, we draw all the flat side first which is this side and then we drywall the opposite side of the first sheet last on this wall okay very uh very important that order 
There's only only one order to do it. It's the same order every time. It's the same order. You don't. It never changes, guys. And like I said, if you want to learn how to drywall these these uh, doors, I'll link a video for you guys if I haven't already. And then boom, this is the outside of the door. And um, I'm, I don't know. I'm putting the the mid end piece in here. Um, I always start in the middle. Put then, then I work out. That's the nice thing about these uh, these corners as well is that I can, I can measure it. It's going to be perfect every time. It's, it's always, always perfectly plumb. If I laser in all my sheets, it's a straight cut. I don't have to angle cut nothing. But that's how that goes, right? That, that's that quarter inch gap space. But on the outside here, this is the first side to go on, and then this is the second side, right? So it's the opposite of the, of the inside for the doors. And you, yeah, like I'm showing you there again, leave nice space, a quarter inch either way for the taper, for the corner beads. I tape these walls too, actually. And there we go. There's the, there's that final corner. They got the flat sides all screwed in, right? This is the flat side. It's all screwed in. So now we put, when we put this sheet on, this stud is perfectly straight. It's perfectly straight. It's got excellent backing all the way. And it's good to go. Start in the middle and work my way out. Always stagger your joints on the inside and outside the walls too, by the way. Okay, I hope you found the video helpful. If so, please give me a thumbs up. I'm putting a video here on the left to show you guys more on metal stud framing. And the video here on the right will give you a lesson on drywalling around the doors. So give you a complete uh, door series as well there. So enjoy the videos and I'm going to see you on the next one. This is Chris. See you there.